So we're on page 44 in the workbook. Hopefully the computer doesn't fall off. So an allegory is a story, poem, or picture that has a hidden meaning. And typically, the meaning is moral or political. Allegories are always trying to communicate a message. There's something that they want you to learn. You could also say that an allegory is like a really long metaphor because we have this very long comparison glasses are talking So, our story that we just looked at, the word shaker, is an allegory. It has a deeper meaning. It has something that they're trying to communicate. So, we're going to treat it first as a story, and then we're going to look at the allegory behind it. So, we've got this. Are you raising your hand? Because you're just stretching out there. So, we've got this plot diagram. Remember when we talked about that months and months and months ago? So, I want us to break down the plot diagram for the word shaker. First, in your shaded boxes, we're just going to label what parts of the plot this is. So thinking about our plot terms, what comes first in a plot? Is it climax, falling action? Good, it's exposition. So we can label this box exposition. Exposition is background information, right? And then what do we have next? This side of the triangle. Good, rising action. And then this, the turning point of the story, climax. And then we have falling action. I'm very good. Hold that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Singh. And then what's the last box? Anybody remember? Good. Resolution. So. In our exposition, if exposition is background information, what we need to understand for the story, who is introduced in the exposition of the word shaker? Hmm? Somebody said something. The trees are introduced. I'm thinking of a person. We're going to say the young man. And who did this young man represent? Hitler. Is so the word shaker explains what the who he is, we get who he represents, and then his part in the story is explained so that we can understand the rest of the story. Now, for rising action, what I'm gonna put is that Hitler spread hate. And what does the girl do? What does she plant? Do you guys remember? A tree. She plants a tree. Now, I'm doing a very simple version of this. We're not going to write everything down. So what do you think? Right. You're good. Thank you. What do you think? the climax of this story would be? What's the turning point? Who comes back? Do you remember? Not, not Hitler. They try to cut down her tree. She plants this tree. It grows and grows and grows. Max comes back. In the word shaker. Not in the rest. We're just talking about the word shaker. 
Okay. It does get a little confusing. But the the man who represents Max, Max, comes back. That's hard to say. I thought Max was the tree. Max is not the tree. We're going to talk about that next, but Max is not the tree. Max is the man who comes back and climbs the tree. Okay, so falling action. The tree falls. The falling action. See what I did there? Yeah. Tree falls. Just let me have this. Let me have this moment. And they leave, right? They start walking. And then the resolution is that some people return to the forest. And some people follow them. So some people return to the forest. And some follow them. So it's a pretty simple story. If we just look at our plot diagram, we would say, oh, it's a story about a man who likes words. And then they plant a tree. And the tree grows and grows and grows, and this girl lives in the tree because she's weird, and then her friend comes back and they leave. But is that just what the story is about? Yes. No. <laughs> no, Will. Help me out here, Will. <laughs> I already told you that it's an... <laughs> you did just summarize it. I know, but is that it? Is that just what yeah. it's about? Yeah. No. There's a deeper meaning. So once you've got these notes, flip to the back. I think, flip, yeah, no, what page number is it? Just turn the page. Then we're going to go to page 45. No, it's stressing me out. I just read it to you, Jackson. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with you? It's okay. I don't know. <laughs> Cody, what are you doing? Maybe that's better. Are y'all good? Are we good if I go to the next page? Yes, maybe. If I can get it to the next page. There we go. Okay, so now we're on the next page, and we have the word shaker as an allegory. So we've read the story. We're going to analyze the story a little bit more and examine the deeper meanings present in the word shaker. For each of the following elements, explain how they are symbols in the story in their connection to the historical context of the novel. All that means is, what is the deeper meaning? Who do these people represent? We've already talked about the first one. Who is the first young man that's introduced? Hitler. And we know because it references his mustache and how he uses words. Now, here's the thing. We know... Yes, Nicholas? It also calls him the Fuhrer. Yes. Good. And it calls him the Fuhrer, which was his title. Now... We know that Hitler was evil. We would say that Hitler was wrong. He was very evil. He did horrible things. But he convinced an entire country to follow him. That didn't happen on accident. Hitler was very, very good at using words to persuade people, to convince people. If you go back and listen to his speeches, he was a very good public speaker. They didn't follow him because they thought he was cute. They didn't follow him because they thought, mm, we'll just... Sounds like a good option. They believed in him, and so he was very good at using these words. And so, when they talk about the seeds of the young man, we're still talking about Hitler. What they re what Max is referring to is Hitler's hateful words slash ideas. We know the power of words. 
you know that if you really want your parents to do something, like you want them to go here for vacation, or you want them to buy this, or you want to go here for dinner, you should convince some other people to tell them too. Like, have you ever, like, gone to your sibling and said, hey, why don't you tell mom and dad this? And then you go and tell them that. And then somebody else goes and tells them that. And so you plant these ideas. You're trying to convince them. That's what Hitler did. He spread these ideas and just kind of let them take root. And so the weapon of the young man refers to Hitler's words. and symbols. The swastika became this symbol that was instantly recognizable. And it, for us, it's a symbol of hatred and of evil and of horrible, horrible tragedy. But Hitler's Nazis clung to this symbol as their identity. It represented everything that they stood for, everything that they believed in. Hitler was very effective in using symbols because it gave people something to identify themselves with and that's why it was so prevalent it was you can see it everywhere now the word shakers are the people who spread the words around another word for this would be propaganda, you could definitely say that, but also like disciples. Disciples are people who believe one leader, and so they go out and they spread that message as well. Jesus had disciples, and so this word is something that we recognize. But there's one word shaker who is not like the others. Who is the best word shaker? Good, it's Lisa. We talked about it when we came across her, because the word shaker describes her as a young girl and she is the best word shaker because she does spread words around but does she spread Hitler's words mm -mm. we talked about how the word shaker and the book thief are about the power of words and Liesl is someone who uses words to help other people so she is a word shaker but she doesn't listen to Hitler now who is the sick man we got a lot of characters but they're all people we already know it said he's someone that Lisa already knows. It's someone who lives in his own country but is hated by the people in his own country. And it's someone who is sick. So that's our good friend Max. Well, you're really stressing me out. Really stress me out. <sighs> now, the seed of the word shaker. The seed of the word shaker is the friendship that Liesl gives Max. Things get a little lovey-dovey here, lots of feels. And in the story, it's symbolized by the tear. And from that tear, this whole tree grows. This super tall tree that's taller than any other tree in the forest. And so the tree represents their friendship. And the kind words that they share, as opposed to Hitler's awful words. And so in a way, it also represents the good that they can do. Sorry, trying to get out of the way. Two more boxes, then we're done. So they have the sick man returns and he climbs up the tree and he finds the best word shaker and he reunites with Liesl and they go, come down the tree which has saved them and they go back out into the world 
Now, there are voices after the word shaker is true false that represent the rest of the world, the people who are watching all of this. And whenever something happens, you have two choices, right? You can choose to agree with someone or you can choose to walk away. And there's two choices that are represented by these people because these voices represent the voices of society and they choose two paths. One, go back to the chorus. So they return to Hitler's ideas. Or two, they abandon Hitler's ideas and follow the best word shaker, which is Wait Till. So do you have a question? Does it choose? Yes. Yes. It does choose. I know. My handwriting is pretty bad. My youngest sister is eight, and one time she was like, you do not have good teacher handwriting. Miss Lester writes like this because she loves Miss Lester. And Miss Lester has, like, first grade handwriting where everything's perfect. I am not perfect. I gave up with that. Over that, so y'all have to start. Can't read cursive. This is not really cursive. Though. I know that, but like, it's just like, it's like, it's like lazy cursive. I don't know. Okay, so we've talked about, we've talked about the story, we've explained the story, we've explained the deeper meaning, and we've talked about what each of these things represent. I want you to answer this box on your own. It doesn't even have to be in complete sentences, but it asks, what does the word shaker, meaning the story itself, what does the story of the word shaker try to teach the reader? Climb trees. No, Will. <laughs> Will's given us our first hint. It's not climb trees. Think about the deeper meaning. What is Max, because he's the one who wrote it, what is Max trying to teach us? us, but also try and teach Lisa about words. It's not about the tree. I'm very concerned now. Deeper meaning. Words have power. I like where Nicholas is going. So I want you to write your own answer. I'm going to come around and check it. If you're online and watching with us, you're going to submit it with this box completed. But y'all write your answer down. It can be a bullet point, and I will come and check it. I don't think anybody's going to watch that.